So people, I am back with another cyberpunk video and it is almost time, Phantom Liberties just around the corner but today guys, we got the rollout of update 2.0 and let me tell you, the patch notes are absolutely massive we're going to go through them all, we've been waiting for this a long long time let's go How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe now the entire patch notes and what they say, what I'll read out today will be linked down below within the video description, well let's go people, let's go. The free update of 2.0 for Cyberpunk 2077 is being rolled out on PC, Playstation 5 and the Xbox Series X and S. It brings an overhaul to a number of gameplay mechanics and core game features such as the police system and perk trees, along with various fixes and improvements. These changes apply to the base game and are available for all players on PC and current gen consoles free of charge. There's more to come on September 26th for owners of the Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty expansion. We can continue playing from existing saves but in order to have the best experience of the extensive changes we made we recommend starting a new playthrough. Come September 26th, owners of Phantom Liberty will also have the option to jump straight into the story of the expansion by starting a new game with a character that is already adequately leveled up. Because changes to crucial game systems are extensive, we strongly recommend uninstalling pre 2.0 mods until the modding community has a chance to up date them. Outdated mods can disrupt the experience in many ways and in some situations may cause critical errors. Please note that the change in PC system requirements announced in the June comes into effect with this update. It's especially important to note that running the game on an SSD is now a requirement. We advise against running the game on a HDD or an SD card or Steam Deck due to lower bandwidth which may cause new content to not stream properly. This doesn't necessarily mean that the 2.0 update won't launch using previous minimum requirements, however because it wasn't tested with them and we won't be actually supporting them, we cannot guarantee the game will work. We recommend considering an upgrade to ensure a more stable gaming experience. Should you want to or need to, uh, you can also revert to the 1.6.3 version of the game, available on Steam and GOG. They go on to state, the full list of changes would be way too long to publish, but we've listed the most notable ones below. And guys, there is absolutely hundreds of them, so sit back, relax, get something to eat, but be prepared. So we're going to start with combat, new police system. The NCPD will chase you when you commit a crime, whether on foot or in a vehicle. Wow, what a change. Uh, this is something we all needed from day one, we all wanted from day one. The types of units in pursuit and their behaviour will depend on your NCPD wanted level. These chases can include various NCPD vehicles, roadblocks and max tech swooping in with AVs. The NCPD will now be present in the world, actively patrolling the streets of Night City. Officers working at crime scenes will now also engage in pursuits. You can now hear NCPD radio chatter through the radio. It's now possible to quick hack NCPD officers. Man, we're going to have some fun here. Vehicle combat. Added the option to engage in combat while driving a vehicle from either first person or third person perspective. While driving, you can use pistols, submachine guns and health items. Some vehicles come equipped with mounted weapons. Melee combat is possible on motorcycles. Vehicle tires can now be shot or slashed. Wow. Introduce new perks that unlock a variety of vehicle related abilities such as quick hacking vehicles, increasing collision damage, boosting vehicle weaponry, allowing the use of Sandy Viston and Karenzikov cyberware, and the ability to exit moving vehicles quickly and stylishly. Vehicles vary in durability. Vehicles equipped with Crystal Dome technology receive protection. You can now encounter AI driven and randomised chases between different factions in a given district. 
Okay, so we're going to move on to combat AI enhancements. We made numerous improvements to enemy AI, including various enhancements to enemy Netrunner AI, improved NPC reactions to grenades and their use of grenades, improved NPC reaction time when flanked, faster detection by enemies when you're walking or sprinting, Enemies equipped with Sandivist and Cyberware will now activate it to counter a player who uses their own. Enemies that don't hear a silenced weapon but do notice the bullet impact will now properly investigate the source of the gunshot. Jesus. Made improvements for scenarios where a group of NPCs can join another group in combat against you. Man, some of these changes are unreal. Netrunner changes added perks to expand net running capabilities. For example, a new overclock mode allows you to upload quick hacks by consuming health if you have insufficient RAM. You can now also acquire the ability to queue multiple quick hacks on a single enemy, rebalance RAM costs, rebalance damage and upload time, change the effects of some quick hacks, remove the option to use breach protocol on enemies. Other health items and grenades now have a limited number of charges that recharge over time after being used. Stamina is no longer drained outside of combat for actions like sprinting, sliding and jumping. Wow, stamina is drained when firing ranged weapons or attacking with melee weapons. Stamina cost varies by weapon. Improved the aim assist feature. Rebalanced base game's main boss fights. Introduced armor penetration for the base game's main bosses. Remove the one hit kill protection from civilians. Okay, so perks and skills. A complete perk tree overhaul. These trees now contain fewer perks, but impact gameplay in a more meaningful way. Progressing in a given perk tree will allow you to unlock special abilities such as overclock mode for netrunners, bolt shots for tech weapons, the adrenaline rush ability for body focused character builds, and so on. Because we introduced extensive changes to the perk system, your spent perk points on existing playthroughs have been refunded. You can also choose to reset your attributes once. Feel free to redistribute these perks and attribute points to suit your preferred playstyle before you continue playing. We merged the previous skills into five new ones. Headhunter, Netrunner, Shinobi, Solo and Engineer. These are not restricted by their corresponding attributes level. On existing playthroughs, your progression on old skills has been transferred to their new counterparts. Skills unlock new passive buffs every 5 levels and can be leveled up to a max of 60. Remove the option to reset all perks at once. Instead it is now possible to refund each perk individually for free. Nice. Introduced new kinds of progression shards. We have attribute shards, carrying capacity shards and cyberware capacity shards. Nice. We're going to move on to cyberware. Armor is now provided primarily by cyberware. As a result, clothing's purpose is mostly cosmetic. Clothing items no longer have mud slots and only some items provide bonuses. Wow. The number of cyberware implants your body can handle is now determined by your cyberware capacity. Cyberware implants are now attuned to specific attributes. The higher the attribute, the stronger the stat bonus. You can now upgrade cyberware on the Ripperdock screen. Some cyberware slots can be unlocked by acquiring specific perks. Added multiple new kinds of cyberware. Visiting Ripperdocks is now more immersive. When getting cyberware installed, you sit on an operating chair and experience different animations depending on the type of implant. Added a side quest introducing the new cyberware system for players who load an older save on the 2.0 update. Wow. Okay, so onto weapons. Change the unique effects of some iconic weapons to better reflect their distinctive features. The first grip animation can now be triggered at any time. PC, hold B or double tap Alt while the weapon is holstered. PlayStation, double tap Triangle while the weapon is holstered. And Xbox, double tap Y while the weapon is holstered. Added smoke grenades, added new melee weapon finishers. You can now find a thermal katana 
in the game. Added new weapon mods and reworked some existing ones. Once installed in a weapon, mods are irreplaceable. All obsolete weapon mods will be removed from the game. In their place, you will find new random weapon mods in your backpack. The quality of any mods added this way depends on your level. Remove the silencer slot from revolvers, remove the scope slot from light machine guns, implemented a new way to craft weapon mods. To craft a mod, you must first have two mods of lower quality. Expanded the stash wall in V's apartment to display all of the iconic weapons from the base game. Okay, so on to vehicles. I'm gonna start with traffic. NPC vehicles can now switch lanes to avoid obstacles. Pedestrians will now try to avoid running into moving vehicles. NPC drivers are now better at avoiding you when you are on foot. Improved braking, acceleration and suspension of cars in traffic. Some NPCs now might react aggressively when you hijack their vehicle. Various improvements to traffic density depending on time of day and night, resulting in more realistic traffic behaviour. Driving with a quest related NPC in your vehicle no longer disables traffic in the occupied lane, resulting in the feeling of a busier city. Okay, so on to others. Fixers will no longer text you about vehicles up for sale. You now purchase vehicles via the Auto Fixer net page on V's computer or by using terminals located in gas stations and repair shops throughout Night City. To find these, enable the new auto fixer filter on the world map. Vehicles are sorted by manufacturer. The vehicles equipped with built in weaponry have photos marked with a special icon. As you earn more street cred, you will unlock more vehicles for purchase. Added new user settings to help configure vehicle camera and controls. You can now also choose between three different third person camera distances when driving a vehicle. Added a new driving category and driving manual to the database. We implemented various changes and tweaks to vehicle performance and handling. New speed sensitive steering applies to most vehicles. The max turn speed and radius adapts to different vehicle speeds better than before. All engines have torque curves now, which reflect the engine's character and any power modifiers, e.g. supercharger, turbo, hybrid. Some adjustments and balancing have been made to vehicle acceleration and top speeds. Conducted a full pass on adjustments to braking force. For slower vehicles it has been dramatically increased and all stopping distances were measured and adjusted as necessary. All vehicles react better to rough terrain and impact with curbs, meridians, etc. Vehicles feel heavier now, as we have improved how we apply gravity as the suspension moves. Many vehicles were fully retuned or their tuning was heavily revised. Multiple other small improvements. Okay, so on to balance and economy. NPCs. All NPCs now scale to your level. Enemy difficulty is no longer dependent on what area of Night City you're in. Enemies will have different tiers depending on the faction they belong to. Some NPC archetypes will feature low, medium or high armour. All resistances for regular NPCs have been removed. Rebalance game difficulty to increase the challenge at higher difficulty. Weapons. Weapons now scale damage based on their tier. The damage for smart weapons has been lowered but they now benefit from dedicated perks. Loot. Loot now scales to your level. Remove the excessive findable loot in the game, such as the loot that distracts from scenes and quest locations. NPCs no longer drop clothing. Crafting and upgrading. Crafting and upgrading now require only one type of component instead of multiple types. Replaced old rarity levels, common, uncommon, rare and epic and legendary with tiers from 1 to 5 plus plus. Apart from cyberware, now only iconic weapons can be upgraded. They gain a higher tier with each upgrade. Onto vendors. You can now access the wardrobe feature through clothing vendors. Vendor stocks scale with your level, expanding as you reach a new tier. Updated vendor stock so that each has a more distinctive theme and specialization. 
vendors no longer sell quick hacks and crafting components. Adjusted the prices of weapons, subway apartments, clothing and more. Okay, so onto audio. New radio stations. 89.7 Growl FM features songs created by our community. The DJ Ash is voiced by Sasha Gray. Nice. Impulse 99.9 features a completely new set of songs remixed by Idris Alba. 107.5 Dark Star is a new station for electronic music. Pretty cool, guys. Okay, so now on to UI. The Quest Journal now has a new cleaner look. Jobs are located in separate tabs depending on type. The distance to each quest marker is now displayed in the journal. Added the option to untrack a quest in the journal. Overhauled the phone UI to be more intuitive. Revamped perk and cyberware menus. Simplified item tooltips. The most important stats are now represented by bars to make comparisons easier. The minimap will now zoom out dramatically depending on your speed. Updated the minimap to better serve the situation around you. Vision cones will not be visible unless a given NPC reacts to your actions or engages in combat. Improved D-pad navigation in menus. You can now change your hood safe zone. The option is available in settings and interface. Multiple UI fixes for wide screens. You can now preview clothing and weapons not only at vendors but also in your inventory. The indicators that show the status of active cyberware are now displayed on your hood. Okay, so quest fixes. Be on the brat the glen. Fix an issue where it wasn't possible to draw fists when the fight started. Blistering love. Fix an issue where the park car despawned after talking to Rogue in front of the afterlife. Cyber psycho sighting bloody ritual. Fix an issue where Zeria's body could get stuck underground after defeating her. Forward to death. The forces defending the gate of the construction site now properly attack V. Gig, serious side effects. Fix an issue where it wasn't possible to deposit the bear acid at the drop point. I fought the law. Fix an issue where it was possible to get stuck in a Red Queen's race after completing the quest. Queen of the Highway. Fix an issue where it wasn't possible to complete the talk to Panem objective on all the saves. Spellbound. It's now possible to steal the data from R3N0's uh, computer if you don't have a cyberdeck. We gotta live together. Fix an issue where an invisible wall made it impossible to return to the camp after the basilisk. Okay, so onto stability and performance. Multiple fixes and improvements related to stability and optimization. Miscellaneous. Added trauma, drama, and arcade minigame that offers a chance to win special rewards. Added more secrets to be discovered in Night City. That's a bit of me. Added some small scenes to the game, including some conversations with Johnny Silverhand when visiting V's apartment in Mega Building H10. You can now change tattoos at Reprodux. You can now choose between free control schemes for controllers. Classic, dynamic, and alternative. Apartments will now give smaller buffs. Update the characters tab in the database to include more side characters. Added new niches to the Columbarium. Added Ukrainian text localization. Okay, so lastly, we have PC specific and console specific. You'll see these on screen now. But yes, guys, an absolute massive update. Update 2.0 for Cyberpunk. Jeez, just in time for Phantom Liberty, which comes out next week. And I cannot wait for it. But yes, guys, tell me your thoughts on this. Are you playing this DLC? Let me know. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully, guys, I will see you on that next one.